All right. Let's go over another example of rational inequalities. And I know this pains you greatly, but I want you prepared for questions that appear oops, on the exam or on the final. Sorry, camera's dying. I have to plug it in. All right. Now that that's taken care of, Uh, let's get on with the drudgery. All right, step one. Everything on one side. And it's funny. Some of my friends say, oh, your videos show how much enthusiasm you bring to math. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasm here, huh? Everything on one side. Yeah, at the very least, I'm not going to lie to you. Boring as can be. 2x plus 6 over 2x plus 1, so we're going to have to subtract 3 from both sides. Now, we're going to have to combine fractions, get common denominators. Let's see, that 3 is over 1, so our least common denominator is just going to be 2x plus 1, which means we don't need to do anything to the first fraction because that already has 2x plus 1 as its denominator. But in order to get 2x plus 1 as the denominator of 3 over 1, we're going to have to multiply top and bottom of that fraction, that one fraction, multiply top and bottom by 2x plus 1 and then we'll be able to combine fractions. So this will be 2x plus 6 minus 3 times 2x plus 1. And then all of this will be over our least common denominator. All right, simplifying 2x plus 6 minus 6x minus 3, that is greater than, or over x minus 1, and that is greater than or equal to 0. Or, sorry, not x minus 1. It's the last example. 2x plus 1. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just so enthralled with this problem. Lost my mind. 4x plus 3 divided by 2x plus 1. One. That's about as simple as I can get it. So we're going to factor the numerator and denominator as much as we possibly can, which in this case requires absolutely no work because these two are about as factored as you can get. So we're going to do minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. Let's see, this is going to be minus 4x is minus 3, so x is minus 3 over minus 4, x is 3 quarters. 2x is minus 1, x is minus 1 half. Now, what was the bad one? We didn't want the denominator to be 0. So we are not going to include this point. But we had this being greater than or equal to. So it's okay if x equals 3 halves. We will include this x value in the endpoints. So what comes first? 3 quarters or minus 1 half? Minus 1 half comes first. So minus 1 half is first and then we'll hit 0, and then 3 quarters is, I'll just say, there. There's my 3 quarters. So we are not including minus 1 half. We are including 3 quarters. This interval to the far left is everything less than minus one half. 
In between, we have everything between minus a half and three quarters, not including minus a half, but including three quarters. And on the far right, we have everything greater than or equal to three quarters. All right, now, let's see. Uh, gonna have to speed this up, and in fact, gonna have to break this up, because not only is the camera dying, I am running out of memory. So, welcome to a split screen. Welcome back. Let's finish this thing up. Now, we've got the intervals laid out, and we're going to want to plug in test points now. And I forgot to label this step. All right, so something less than minus one half. How about x equals minus one? If I plug into this factored, if you can call it factored, in this factored form, I'm gonna have minus four times minus one is gonna be four plus three divided by minus two plus one, that's gonna be seven over minus one. Positive over a negative is going to be negative. Now, something between minus a half and three quarters. Well, the only nice number I know of between those two is zero. Plugging in zero is just gonna give us uh, three on top and one on bottom. So positive over positive, we get positive. And something larger than three quarters, since we can't pick endpoints for our test points, let's pick something like one. Picking 1 gets us minus 4 plus 3 over 2 plus 1, that is minus 1 over 3, that is negative. Now, what indeed are we looking for? Well, we wanted this thing to be greater than or equal to zero. Things greater than or equal to zero are positive and above the x-axis. So our answer is going to be this, that x has to be between minus one-half and three-quarters, and it can only be equal to, um, we're only throwing in the endpoint three-quarters, so as it would be an int interval notation, minus one half, three quarters, with parentheses excluding the minus one half, and square brackets including the three quarters. And that, we are now done with chapter P, P3 and P4.